have ourselves a new Audi S3 for the 2025 model year. And this looks so much better than the normal a3 sedan, which I made a video on, uh, I think about a month ago. And the thing is here, when I look at this rear end, Audi basically did exactly what I said I wanted to see redesigned in the A3 sedan. So this is a great looking small little Audi and we're gonna have a look at the design and compare it to the normal A3 sedan and uh, compare that to the S3 from the front side and rear and the interior. And I'm gonna let you know exactly what those small little detail tweaks to the design front and rear uh, happen to the S3. And we also have more power. So before we jump into Photoshop and have a look at this car in design, let's talk about some of the spec and tech article from Car and Driver, link down below in the description. So 2025 Audi S3 gets a power bump, a new look and you get the RS3's drift mode, which is great. I love when companies, when they release an S model, a GTI, an AMG or whatever performance cars, they, they put stuff in there in the tech that makes it feel like it is a special car when it comes to the performance and the uh, enjoyment of driving it. So we have a revision includes an extra 22 horsepower for the turbo four liter, uh, plus a revised suspension, you also get larger brakes here and it's expected to arrive in the US later this year. You have new headlights and taillights and four new exterior colors. The S3 now makes 328 horsepower and 310 pound-feet of torque. Not bad, it feels almost like RS3 numbers, although the RS3 makes 400 horsepower. You still have a turbocharged two liter inline four and Audi claims, they're being a little cheeky here. They claim zero to 60 in, 60, uh, zero to 60 in 4.4 .4 seconds, but the old S3 with less power did it in 4.3 seconds. So this will probably be faster than the old S3, obviously more power. They've also tweaked the uh, transmission a little bit. So you still have a seven speed dual clutch, but they say it is quicker now. And I don't think that was necessarily needed because the old S3 and the RS3 had a very quick and snappy gearbox. So this is going to be interesting to drive. You have drift mode, which Audi calls dynamic plus. They can't call it drift mode, that's too, American for, for the Germans. So they need to put a more of a sophisticated name for it. Dynamic plus, essentially drift mode. And that sends more power to the rear axle and the outside rear wheel. So if you go into a cor corner, it's gonna send more power to that outside rear wheel to make the rear end drift. And I think that is such a cool idea. You have newly available Falcon summer tires should make the S3 grippier than before. Interior looks great. You have a couple of changes here uh, for the normal A3 model, which we're gonna have a look at in a minute. Fantastic interior, just looks great. A little bit sharp here maybe, and these vents have always been very funky to me, the positioning of them. There's also ambient lighting is newly standard for the interior, and you have a flat bottom steering wheel as an option for the S3. And of course, this being an S model, you do want to get the flat bottom steering wheel with a little S logo right here on the third spoke. The pricing is likely to rise somewhat compared to the current uh, S3, which cost about $48,500. With that said, let's jump in to Photoshop. Have a look at the new S3 and what's going on with this design. Compare it to the uh, not, I wasn't a huge fan of the new A3, which we can see up top here. I think this lower section, as I said in my video about this car, it looks more, it looks too organic for the rest of the, you know, chiseled face. It feels like this lower section does not have a clear connection to what's going on in the, pretty much the rest of the entire car. I did prefer the older, the, the current generation A3 sedan over this one, simply for the reason that I think the graphics in the front flows better overall. They also moved this logo to now sit and kind of cut the grill right here instead of having it be inside of the grill. And that's a detail that I don't really like and I don't dislike, it just happened. And here we have the new S3 down here and look how much better this lower graphics now feels and suit, suits the rest of the graphics that we have going on in the front. We now have the same chiseledness and angles, almost geometrical angles for the lower intake, which here looks too organic for me for this type of car. And this feels way better connected to specifically the headlights and also the grill, which also has this very chiseled look to it. As you can see right here, I love the hood design with these two lines cutting into the grill 
here. I wish these lines had some sort of connection to what's going on in the grill. I'm not sure exactly how that would play out, but it would be nice to see. You still have the same uh, new LEDs that make this sort of uh, welcoming uh, dance or whatever you want to call it. You can customize the LEDs to show to light up in different ways if you want to do that. Now looking at the side view and the A3 has one of the best looking side views in the business in this specific category of car because the normal A3 sedan even that one looks planted and very muscular. You can see that we have a very clean shoulder line. I love that they kept this even though this is a smaller brother. Uh, you can still you still have a solid sharp chiseled shoulder line that stretches from one corner of the headlight to the corner of the taillight. But in addition to that, and this is something that I thought they would uh, save for the um, S3 and the RS3, is this area here. We have a very beefy looking triangle here that adds some muscle to the rear end. You can see it more clearly here. This piece looks fantastic. We have this line cutting in from the taillight and creating a solid muscle over the rear axles. Looking really cool. I also like that they kept the, the silver caps for the side mirrors and this goes back in tradition with Audi S models. Something that I have uh, very fond memories of from when I was a kid. Just seeing S models, you knew there was something special about that Audi rolling. It looks like a normal A4 Avant or something, but then you see the silver side mirrors and you, you knew that this is an S4 or an RS4 and I'm glad that they kept that for this generation as well. Of course we still have the same shoulder line here cutting in in the exact same line and we have the muscles in the S3 as well intact. You can see it here in the front here too. We do have this triangular feel to plant the car properly on the ground. The wheels, not a huge fan of these wheels. Probably something that I would switch out and maybe even lower it half an inch or so just to bring it a little closer to the ground and put some uh, wheels that has some depth to them or maybe a staggered setup for the wheels. We have some silver trim at the bottom here as well and the silver trim doesn't come back in there. This looks to be black to me. We're gonna have a look at the rear end in a minute but we do have some silver trim in the front end. So silver in the front the side but Audi said no silver in the rear end. So let's check out the rear view here and I'm not sure if you watched my A3 sedan video but what I said there is basically as I said what Audi exactly did with the redesign of or, or the design of the S3 when you compare it to the normal A3 up here. I wasn't a huge fan of these wings, winglets that sticks in here with the body color. I just want, it feels like it's, they don't, shouldn't be there. I just want to remove them and have the black piece, the diffuser just cut straight in to the body like this and remove these all together. And then I wanted to see some exhaust pipes here as well. I kind of like this integration of the reflector lights in the bumper like this and the taillight looks pretty good as well. Adding a little bit more styling than the previous generation uh, A3 and S3. And we still have what Audi does so well is this subtle little ducktail with a beautiful chamfer on top of it right here. And you can see on the S3 you even get this lip spoiler, an added piece for the S3. But looking at the lower section, this is what I want to focus on and the changes that they made. And I love this new S3 design because Again, it feels like if I were to redesign the A3, this is exactly what it would look like. Now we don't have these winglets sticking up here like we have on the A3 up there. They removed that and instead, guess what? They just have the diffuser cut straight down and continue into the bodywork just like I wanted to see. It also feels like it's a little bit more aggressive in the diffuser. And last but not least, we do have exhaust pipes, visible quad tailpipes for the S3. Something that is made, they could at least have put uh, two little small pipes on the normal A3 sedan. I would like to see that because it's still a pretty sporty looking small little sedan. But they also switched out the reflector lights. So you can see this area, this graphics on the normal uh, A3 sedan up here. There's a line that just cuts from, uh, goes from one end to the other of the rear end. And now they have it a little bit more dynamic. Instead, they implemented this beautiful chamfer here, looking fantastic. They then cuts down and this is what then houses this new reflector light or the new positioning of the reflector light right here on the side. Looking really cool and I do think this is a massive improvement just over the normal A3. The A3 is not a bad looking design. There's just a small little tweaks that I wanted to see 
uh, change to the exterior design. Now looking at the interior here, Audi still crushing it with the interiors, even though I do think that uh, they are going to move on to this big uh, TV, widescreen TV on the dash, because we see that in the new uh, Q6, the new EV concept. If you look at the interiors of those, they all have a big screen on the dash, which is a shame, but still, the 2025 S3 keeps the uh, beautiful interiors of Audi. You can see the changes here. We have a round steering wheel for the normal A3 and the S3. You have the optional flat bottom steering wheel looking a lot more sportier. A couple of details I would like to change in here on both of these, the A3 and the S3, is you see here, this gloss black. I've never been a fan of all the gloss black that we have in the interiors of Audi because you can see it gets dusty and you can see all the fingerprints very easily and quickly. I love the way they integrated the vents on this car, uh, both the A3 and the S3, and the interior hasn't really changed a lot with this facelift. This looks super sharp. I'm not sure why they have this angle here. It looks like if you touch this edge, you're gonna cut yourself. That's how sharp this looks. But the overall integration looks decent, and I'm really glad that they still have the 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster fully customizable. If you want to, as you know, you can have this be a full map, and you still have the beautiful housing for it, a proper housing that even sticks up above the steering wheel in these images, looking really cool. And we have a decent size uh, infotainment screen as well. Nothing too crazy. And that's exactly what I want to see. In addition to all these physical knobs and buttons that we have for the climate control setting, start button down here, a couple of USBs. I do believe there is a wireless charging pad at the bottom. So the update for the new 2025 S3 is great, not just when it comes to the boost with 22 extra horsepower, the dynamic, what, what do they call it? The dynamics plus or something like that? The drift mode, we can call it the drift mode, now added to the S3 as well, and the interior with the flat bottom steering wheel and the gauge cluster infotainment screen looks like a classic interior with very high tech modern technology. And that's really all I want to see in modern interiors. So overall, a great job by Audi. And I am sure that this will be a blast to drive.